get in the frame a little bit more, you see? You gotta get in the frame oh. just a little bit more. Lean over. You're live. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Dara Caponegro. If you don't know me, I'm the creative director of F. Schumacher & Co. And I'm so glad to have you here today for our panel. Um, first and foremost, I hope that you're all healthy and staying safe. Um, I have a little bit of joy for our Friday morning. Um, I have two of my favorite ladies with me, both from Charlotte, North Carolina. They're practicing um, social distance, dis distancing outside of Barry Benson's house in Charlotte. Chandra's um, Zoom calls are not working at her house, so they are six feet apart joining us today. And um, I can't think of two more incredible ladies that I'd love to talk to this morning. So Barry, as you probably all know, is an incredible interior designer out of Charlotte. I first got to meet her when I photographed her house um, for Domino Magazine. She wound up being one of our most successful cover girls. And her work is, um, it references tradition, but it's definitely more contemporary and always ingenious and exciting. And I'm a big, big fan. And we also have Chandra Johnson with us today. And Chandra owns a gallery in Charlotte called Soco Gallery. And it has really transformed the way um, the art, the art world in, in the South. It, it has become a hub for conversation and um, education around art. And um, Barry and Chandra worked together on Chandra's house. And um, that was the beginning of their friendship and collaboration. And since then they have, um, they have joined forces to design, to um, create a company called Pegnaris. Um, which Schumacher is involved in. We are creating wallpapers together and I wanted to introduce them. Please join me in welcoming them. And um, we're gonna learn a little bit about their collaboration, their friendship, what they've learned through the process, how it might help you in your daily lives, um, which I think is the ultimate um, <clears throat> goal for all of these panels. You know, what can we all take away from it? And uh, please join me in welcoming Barry and Chandra. So there's no applause, obviously, but I'm going to have a quick applause. <laughs> Thank you. <So. laughs> it's actually so. easier to do this instead of in an audience. You I don't, agree. you have no idea who yeah. is listening to you. So. I, we don't want to know how many people are listening, actually. <laughs> well, we have a lot. So um, welcome. <laughs> Thank you both. And um, maybe you guys can start just by talking a little bit about your careers before you met one another and then segue into um, how you met and tell us a little bit about Peg Norris. Do you want to well, start? Before we met, well, I, um, I'm from Oklahoma and moved to New York. I was there from 2000 to 2005 and I got married and moved to Charlotte in 2005. And I think I met Barry shortly after, maybe around 2007 yeah. and um, opened the gallery in 2015. We turned five in May. It's hard to believe. Congratulations. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to open our doors in May to celebrate, but we'll celebrate regardless. So I started my career um, in hospitality, hospitality design. I worked for Hirsch Bedner. We did hotels um, I, right out of design school. I um, we did hotels in Germany and Turkey and New Orleans, all different um, different um, places. So for about six years, I worked for Hirsch Bedner and um, under the direction of Jan Clausen and Chuck Tuning. I don't know if anybody knows that they were very fabulous interior designers. And um, then I started my own business in 1998 in the sunroom of my rental house and from that point on I've had my own business and um, I guess I met Dara 2000 was it 2007 is that I around? Think so I think so we were working on um, you did Laura Van Root's house I met then and then about seven months later you came to shoot my house and and since then you've been a huge mentor to me and um, friend and um, I have an interior design business, about six people work for me 
um, in Charlotte. And we also have started doing collaborations with Highland House and um, Addison Weeks Hardware and now created this business together, um, Peg Norris, around 2018. Yeah. yeah. You guys started working together because Barry, you helped Chandra with her house, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. It started, so that's, she came on, I want to say it was like 2007, 2008. We need to get our years. Down. I think it, we did, I did your closet. That was yeah, the first project. Yeah, it started project with, with the Perry. closet renovation with Perry Poole. And then it went from that little tiny closet to the entire house. So I started as Barry's client. Then we became friends. And Barry was incredibly supportive when I started my business and she became my client and we decided to start peg norris it's uh it's a sub company of barry benson interior design and soko gallery and um it was something that happened really organically i don't think either of us you know thought it would it started with one small project with one artist for our highland house and then it just snowballed from there it's been incredible to watch so tell us about how it started <clears throat> So I was looking, I, I was um, working on a chest for designing a chest and I was so inspired. I had a recent trip to Sweden and had always been obsessed with Italy and Fornicetti and, you know, then inspired by Joseph Frank and Sweden and had seen some of their chests and their botanicals that were painted on chests. And I, I was looking around for the right artists. I'd reached out to a few, um, I was thinking decoupage. I was thinking different ways to do it. And I walked into Soko Gallery and there were, Annie Lemansky had an installation of some of her flora and fauna paintings. And they were so different um, from Fr Joseph Frank or Fornicetti, but, but also just a, a little modern, edgier. A more modern version. A modern version. And edgier, um, yeah. I thought immediately, I saw it and I thought it was perfect. And I reached out to Shani first and then Annie Lemansky was excited about it. She did these, um, she actually created these stickers that went on the front of the chest and also had a recent installation at Penland mm -hmm. where all of the pieces, the um, the little butterflies, every single piece was was scanned and and affixed to wood and then she, oh, okay. she cut each of them out with a bandsaw. It was incredibly labor intensive. And she had about 5,000 pieces of them left. And I mean, how many? 100,000 in her installation at Penland. Um, you should look it up, um, the Penland um, installation of Queen's Flight. And so she brought, I asked her if she would bring some of those to for the, the first installation of these chests. And she had them flying, she arranged them flying up above the, um, the chest. And when I was looking through pictures after the installation, I thought, gosh, it reminds me of like Gracie wallpapers or like, wouldn't this translate well to, to De Gournay or Gracie, you know, these la large panels. And I told Shani that, and that's where it started. Yeah. And I, I get very old. We have some pictures. We have some pictures of her work. Um, Annie is on standby. Annie, can you just show us some of Annie, um, Annie's work? on the screen just so that everyone can see it. So this is the wallpaper that we have at Schumacher. It's called Queen's Flight. And let's scroll through just to see some of the fine art. So these are the pieces. That, that was at Soka, yeah, that's at Soka. So everything she does is labor intensive. Yes. You can speak to yeah. that. It's so just- she, um, She's a multidisciplinary artist working in 2D collage and 3D sculpture. And she, you know, her work really focuses on the complex symbiotic relationship between humans and, and animals, which is ob obviously very relevant right now. Um, and she lives in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. She was a resident at Penland for, for a long time. And she's an incredible joy to work with. We've had a lot of fun working with her on this project and you know i give barry this was an installation at soka that barry saw that started the whole thing actually <laughs> and um so barry came to me she had the idea i fully give her credit and um i said all right let's approach annie and see if she's interested and um and she, she was so, in sorry i just want to go back to the screen of the two of you okay thanks 
Sorry, Chandra, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, that's okay. But I give Barry a lot of credit because she really had the vision and she could see how Annie's installation could translate into design. And she even has me thinking differently about art now in that way. So I give her a lot of credit for having that vision. And even I was like, okay, how will this work? And then she she got to work with Elizabeth and mocked up some designs and you, know, you saw what it looked like. It's incredible. And then how did you wind up with the wallpaper? So we, so Annie was going to have a, another installation at SoCo and I, I said, Let, let's get on a call with her and see what you think. And um, we called her and she said, well, I'm so busy where she was on to her next work and she was spending so much time. She was like, I honestly don't have any time to do this. And I said, but what, maybe what, since you've already done this, what if we do all of the legwork, almost like the Damien Hurst, where he has, you know, a hundred people doing all of the work. And I said, what if we, you know, digitally cut all of these things out and then get them as close to your installation as possible. And then you come in and tweak. And honestly, that's exactly what happened. She came in at the last minute and it took, I think we have a, um, another woman in my office. Um, Elizabeth Dooley is amazing at InDesign and um, Photoshop and she got it completely ready and then it took I think Annie five minutes yeah five to ten minutes to get it to where it needed to be I think even Annie was surprised how quickly that process came together on her end and I think that's part of what evolved this company as we were thinking you know this is past work that artists have done they're on to the next thing and not all artists are, but the ones that we are looking at and they're on to the next thing. And what can we do to like, if we see that it, it's trans, it can translate into home, let's approach them and, and use this as um, a springboard. And then it turns into passive income for um, the, the artists. And once we realized that that you know we found a printing company of course that we could do it um just to try sample runs and it and had it installed in the bathroom during her installation at soco and people just went you know nuts during the installation right. and she did too which was the most yeah. fun about it all yeah, yeah. And, and then i inserted myself and i talked you into coming to schumacher so um we're really proud to be carrying all the pegnaris wallpapers starting with Annie, which just launched a few months ago. And we have a new one coming out in May with Jackie Gendel. Um, Annie Bork, do you mind showing us the Jackie Gendel ones? So Barry and Chandra, maybe you can talk a little bit about these. Yeah, so this is, um these are all a take on Jackie's paintings and her watercolors. And she, in most of her work, she um, always portrays really strong female figures with sometimes historical references, sometimes not. And um, we, after, after we had done the wallpaper with Annie, we already knew that we were going to start looking at another artist. And Barry kept saying, who should it be, who should it be? And I was pretty adamant that it be Jackie Gindel. So uh, we did a studio visit. I actually couldn't make that studio visit, but Barry went to her studio in Rhode Island and sifted through thousands of drawings and brought some home on a plane and we got to work. This is called um, Golden Age. And um, Barry can talk about the design details. I mean, this will go over an entire wall so you can see the, the borders up top would be the top of the... Right, so these panels are 12 feet tall. So it's a real mural. Yeah. And, you know, we were, you know, when I saw some of the pieces, like that's one of the, that's one of the great collaborations with the two of us is she, she is so in tune with the art world. She knows who's in the conversation. She knows the, the artists that would translate. And she also has an amazing eye. I mean, definitely I helped her with her house, but she is very clear what she wants for her own um, aesthetic. And I think she has such a good eye that she can also as a client see what would be great in the home, but also know the artist to sort of push. And then I am looking really hard to see where it translates. I immediately started, thought of Jean Cocteau and his Santo Despirito um, home that he did it and all of the lyrical, um, 
lyrical drawings that he did at that va the vacation home. And I think that that um, it really feels like her work. And she, you know, as you can see, it's a, um, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, mural. And it, this was a little different process than Annie's wallpaper. Uh, Jackie did not have the luxury of just coming in <laughs> at the last minute for five minutes. Um, Jackie really had to, she had to paint the panels to scale. And um, this work was inspired from previous work, but she had to create this work for it to translate into the paper. And she was game, so she has been a dream. Annie, can you show us the other one? So this one's called Toile de Femme, and it has, or Femme, however, I'm not sure, sure exactly, and it has um, different scenes of women um, in the park, I guess, mostly, right? You want to describe that a little bit? So I think what, um, you know, her idea for this is she wanted girls doing, um, oop, we have a lab. <laughs> <laughs> um, you go ahead, I'll go. Um, so we had, um, my dog is trying to get into the webinar. <laughs> um, so, um, so she wanted to do her whole idea is what girls do in the country in the city, fabulous things. And as you can see, there's there's a rock band, there's women shooting arrows off horses, there's um, there's snakes, there's um, there's women in the country. I mean, we just really think that this is. Um, it's one of my favorite. I can see this so many places, and that's one of the things we do is when we're trying to come up with it, we're like, is this a bathroom? Is this a kitchen? Is this a girl's room? Or is this, and we sort of thought, oh, this could be anywhere. That, you know, yeah. I love it though, like in a teenage uh, girl's room. I mean, it has so much power and confidence, and it's so inspiring. I think it's a wonderful addition to and an inspiration to women everywhere, whether they're young or old. And I think so there's one more. Sorry, go ahead. No, I think this is what she wanted to evoke in this piece. So this was something, these were drawings that we found in little, you know, she in this huge stack that some of them had coffee cups stuck to them. And, and the these were these fabulous drawings that appear in her art. But um, we sort of started gathering them and then she um, she honestly had always wanted to do a wallpaper which was the craziest thing when we called her out of the blue she was like oh my gosh I've wanted to do this so I think this was in the back of her head always and there's one more Annie can you show us the other one do you guys want to comment on this okay. I said this is a full this is another full-scale mural that um, that um, is reminiscent of some of her work where her watercolor works. And, um, you know, this was challenging because she's used to working on a much smaller scale with watercolor. So yeah. to create this was a challenge in a larger scale. So, um, but we think it's just beautiful. And um, she has different color palettes, but each of them, um, she was very open to, to, to looking at things that would be relatable to people's dining rooms and living rooms and bedrooms. And I think this is a beautiful color palette. We have, what is it, a blue, one yeah, more, a, like a blue green color yeah. palette in this also coming out. But, um, and she was really open to tweaking the work. And I think that's one of, it, it really helps in the process when the artist is open to that. And you, that isn't typical for them when they're creating their work for an exhibition, you know, they're very specific. And with this, they, they have to be really open to tweaking it into design. And she was incredibly open. And I think because of that, we got a really, really, three really good papers. Yeah, and these are 12 feet. This one is 12 feet tall too. Annie, do you mind just scrolling through some of the fine artwork? So you can see some of her women. Yeah, she always has an incredible use of color. I love this piece. Yeah, beautiful. Do you own this piece? That piece, yeah, it's at Soka. And so you so, see the dots. She does those incredible dots, and that showed up in uh, Lodge d'Or in the Golden Age. Yeah. So you just pitched your next collection, which is also a female artist. Can you tell me a little bit about why why all women? Will they all, always be all women, or is there a reason for that? 
That's just been organic, truly. Uh, but clearly, we're female advocates, and I think there is a strong history at SoCo with supporting females in the arts. Um, so it just has happened naturally, somehow. I mean, we're not saying that it's going to all be women, but if it is a man, he's going to have to have a lot of female energy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so some of these are pretty out there how do you imagine like do you think it's going to be a stretch for some people to use them or like how would you encourage people to use them how do you see them being used in rooms um i don't know can you talk a little bit about their application that's you barry You're you think designer. it's me okay <laughs> so i'll answer this I do think, I mean, I, I, you know, I know clients, I think of the kind of clients that, that will use this and sort of step out of the box. But I also think that people really do want to live with art. And I think it's an opportunity just to, um, to do something different. Of course, wallpapers are becoming so, um, you know, people are experimenting more and adding them to more rooms than just the bathrooms than the kitchens. Um, so I think, um, you know, it, it adds personality, personality to a house. It's an opportunity to have a, a conversation. I think these um, wallpapers and these artists that we're working with um, have such an authentic story about how they've come to this art in their life. And I, I think um, that's what's so amazing with this is we're not just coming up with these beautiful images. We're actually tapping artists that have been working on this their entire art career. And, and so these, see these wallpapers have so many meanings behind them. And I think it's, you know, what's more fun than sitting down at, din at a dinner party or a dinner and, and looking to your left and seeing so much art next right. to you. Yeah. And I have been so grateful to Schumacher to include information about the artist on the batches. I think that's a really neat way to present the papers too. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. a mission is to support these artists, not, um, you know, overexpose them, but also, you know, tell their story, show that this is past work in a different scale and a different application and, and not um, in any way sort of get in the way of their next, their next work and also support them at the same time. Yes. yes. Right. I mean, it's interesting because it's a commercial project, right? And many artists could be resistant to that, but you haven't had that. And I think that's, you know, that's a credit to Shani because I think, you know, her, you know, her gallery is, is such a, you know, a well-known gallery and it, you know, she's, she, she legitimizes it. And I think if an interior designer like me called up in the middle of anything and said, I would love to do your wall, you know, would you consider doing a wallpaper for us? Um, especially at the very beginning of starting this work, not many people were doing it. Um, I don't think they would, I think they would be reluctant. They wouldn't be as open to it. And I think Shani really understands that part of taking care of the artists and they know they feel safe with her. Well, I also think our timing is really spot on. I, I feel after, I, I noticed after the Venice Biennale in 2016, there was a lot of craft and design shown at that Biennale. And I feel like the, world, the art world started to shift after that. And you are seeing more contemporary artists venture into bold, creative things like design. And so I think our timing is really impeccable too. Um, speaking of timing, so what do you think of, is art's place in our current in our current world? You know, with coronavirus and the fact that we're, you know, um, all struggling. You know, some of us more than others. Um, how do you see art and decoration fitting into all of that? Well, I, art is for everyone, and um, art is where you can where the world can be reinvented and you can see the world differently. And I think it's a very visual, spiritual experience. So I think it's actually very important in times like these, I would say. And I think we're spending so much time in our home. Um, I mean, especially I'm always working on other people's um, projects and it's 
the first time I've had an opportunity. I mean, I don't think I've done a lot different to my house since 2007, Dara. <laughs> so it's the first time that I'm really sort of getting to sit down and realize how my, my family has shifted, what, what, how we use the house differently. Um, do, you know, do we want to, you know, reimagine certain rooms? Um, what furniture works, what doesn't? What, you know, wallpapers, has it grown with us? Do the kids need a, a, a different feel? I think, um, I mean, yes, we're all struggling financially and also um, mentally during this, but I also think there's some silver linings coming out of it. And, you know, instead of looking at Instagram all day, I'm picking, you know, I get books for Christmas, like 10 to 15 books. I'm always picking up books at Soco Gallery. I'm, you know, I'm finally getting a chance for that plug. <laughs> yeah, um, you I'm, do have I'm, amazing books at your gallery. Hey, Barry, you have to move forward or something because there's yeah, so much glare. Yeah, I don't. Let's uh -oh. see. Yeah, that's better. That's better. The sun, the sun is following us, and we're trying to keep our distance. <laughs> much better. I'm gonna give you a little bit more, Annie. I I think you know everyone is everyone's home right now, and your home is your sanctuary during these times and it, it needs to feel feel like a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. So there are a lot of people um, on this call who are in business and decorators in particular and designers. Um, tell us a little bit about how you form the business, some of the nuts and bolts and how you got it off the ground. And I mean, sure, you have an idea, but you made the idea a reality. And, you know, can you tell us about some of the things that got you going? Well, I think we got interest immediately. Um, I think after we posted on an, on an Instagram, after the installation, um, Architectural Digest immediately emailed us about, about you know, their interest. So we knew something was very, we knew that was the first time we were doing it as a joy project and it just, you know, organic at first. And we knew that that was sort of interesting. And we also had so much joy from it. So as soon as that those a couple of those things started happening we thought gosh this is such a fun business we love collaborating it's such a creative outlet and it's so different and you know i've gotten very interested because of um because of shani in art and going to art fairs it's just been such a fun way to look at design in a different way for me and so I think that started and then of course the next part is the design you know the the business part and and that's been a huge um, learning lesson for me just because I know how to make money doing interior design projects but I've never been in retail or any type of um, you know passive income or you know any kind of different kind of um, business so you know we've done some we went to the Better Business Bureau. We have like called every single, we contact Uni University of North Carolina's business program. We've been asking everybody we know about, you know, contracts and um, commissions and how to bring, you know, how to bring in money, a business plan. And so this is, I've never really done that part of my business. It's always, I mean, fortunately, I've had the good fortune of it just working well, um, but right now, things are shifting a little bit. A lot of time is taken up with, with um, that's you know, not paying yet. So, and it's beginning to, that's uh -huh. exciting. But. Well, and we had started on the project with Annie Lomansky for Fairy's Trust at Highland House. And after we decided to do the wallpaper, it, we installed it, there, it started to generate interest. That's when Barry, and. I, Barry really was the one who said, okay, we need to do this. Let's start a company together. And I was like, I'm building a company right now. I don't need to start another company, Barry, please, no. And <laughs> she just stayed on me about it. And we had a lot of conversations, a lot of transparent conversations. And um, we decided to go for it. And I think we did a really good job of building the foundation, the business foundation, so we could just build from there. And um, I think that's been, that's been really crucial, especially now. So we have one employee besides ourselves, but we both, ta uh, Carson Pascal has um, sort of taken on the yeah, reins of- She's amazing. Yes, amazing. And she's taken on um, um, 
organizing and getting this whole business started. And, and we, we, all we pull from Soco Gallery. So Soco Gallery employees work on Pegnoris and same for Barry Benson Interior Design. So we're using both businesses as resources that funnel into Pegnoris and that's been really helpful too. And um, yeah. And it seems to grow a little bit more each time and yeah. we're re realizing, you know, Elizabeth Julie has been a wonder kid with, um, or wonder woman, not a kid. <laughs> um, I've known her since she was a kid, so I say that, but um, we've realized that she's spending a lot of time on us and, you know, now she's got to be a partial employee to Peg Norris and, you know, Shani has great financial um, sources, so we've got we're leaning on her um, group to help us with, with that. So it's getting, we're learning more each time. And um, thanks to Schumacher, we, you know, we are starting to have a business and starting to see some returns, which is really exciting because we love it so much. Well, we couldn't be more excited about it. You know, I mean, Schumacher has always had a, a history of kind of um, embracing what's new and what's exciting and not being, I mean, we have a very classic side, but then we also have this side that's um, very forward thinking. So, you know, back in 1930, we did our first uh, designer collaboration with the interior, with the fashion designer, Paul Poiré, which we reintroduced a couple of years ago. And it's so out there and wonderful and alive. And so it's fun to be joining forces with you to be able to continue that tradition. It's really been a great, um, fun thing for us. And I'm so glad it worked out. You know, it kind of just happened from a, you know, a very, you know, side conversation and one thing turned into the next. And so we're just so proud to be partners with you. So thank you for that. And it thank seems you. like the two of you really complement each other so well. Um, can you talk a little bit about like what, you each bring to the table and why it works and um, some of the things that you've had, some of the challenges that you've had to overcome? Well, we knew from working on projects at my house when I was, or I'm still very client, we knew that we worked well together. And um, we, I feel like very so much creative vision to the business. And I'm probably a little bit more focused on the business part of it but then sometimes we revert sometimes I'll go creative and then she thinks more you know high level business so I think we have a lot of similarities but we also bring different skill sets to to the business that that really helps um Shani I feel like you introduce the the artist you know exactly that the artist needs to be the next one and I look really closely um, at how it can translate. And I think that that um, is a great thing. And I, and I have a thousand ideas and I think you, um, you can curate the ideas. And that's a, a important step for me. Cause I, I mean, I could have sent you 7,000 papers for our, our third <laughs> artist um, collaboration. But I think, you know, the two of us bounce each other ideas off each other and she can sort of be the eagle eye um, and I can come up with crazy ideas and, you know, a few of them are good and, and a lot I, of them are good. <laughs> uh, well, that's very nice, but, um, I do think we complement each other very well. And if you disagree, how do you navigate that? Uh, we, I feel like we agree on a lot. If it's a bad idea, we workshop it and we sort of come to the same solution mm -hmm. and, um, it's, I don't ever think we fully disagree. We just navigate and figure out what's the best for everybody involved. And that's how we move forward. And I think since we did the how our her house together, I you know, I know when she doesn't like something and I'm always trying, you know, as a designer for for um clients, I'm always trying to like push them further, but also really do what they love and really find like that that thing that they're just obsessed with. So I can always tell, like when she we're showing can, something, I'm like, someone's going quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, if I go quiet, you know, I don't like something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can tell in a heartbeat that, it is, that, that it's not the right thing. And so I'm constantly trying to look at her, you know, she's got such fabulous taste. I think the ultimate thing is we have so much respect for each other's um, 
opinion and um, aesthetic that I think we're both sort of leaning leaning in on each other yeah. to figure it out. Well, and even me saying, okay, Jackie Gendel, she's the next artist. And then I'm like, okay, Barry, figure it out. <laughs> and she's like, okay. So the, <laughs> I knew she would. So the next one, um, can we go ahead and say, or should we just? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so you feel comfortable. So Liz Nielsen, who is, as as Shani calls her, she is like, what do you call her? Sunshine? She's, she's human sunshine. Human sunshine. <laughs> and I've just adored her. I've collected a couple of her pieces and um, and she, you know, I could see it. And it was always one that was in the back of her head, but I kept on thinking it was, you know, I didn't know exactly how it was going to go. We went to it. She's in a McCall um, Residence. residence. And I went to one of her openings and I saw this one plant in one of her pieces. And I guess we don't have any, uh, it's hard to talk about it, but I saw it and I thought, okay, I've got it. I can see how this is gonna be. And then Elizabeth Dooley, who is just amazing with in design and um, Photoshop, I said, try this in different scales and pattern. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be really an amazing thing. It's very modern work, but applied in a very traditional way. So I'm really excited about this one. And yeah, then we I are too. Excited because I love I love Liz and I love her work. And then I'm so curious to see what Barry and Elizabeth and with the artists, what they come up with for a wallpaper pattern. And it's always so clever. Yeah. That's well we were so excited when we saw it. So that that will probably come out in not until 2021, but where um I think you guys will all like it. So we have some time for questions. Barry, before we start answering questions, we need to see more of your face. Okay. <laughs> Just a little bit. Okay. Well, now we can see sunshine good. back, right? Okay. Maybe if you just lean in, that's good. That's good. Sorry, I'm gonna get a little closer scanning, <laughs> but. Okay, so we have a question. How wide are the 12th? foot high Jackie murals. I think they're 54 inches, right? How wide? Yes. Um, so, but the whole thing makes up um, two 54 inch um, panels. So the whole thing is, do the math for me. 108 inches. <laughs> 108 <laughs> inches. Yeah. So they're 108 by 12 feet, right? Yeah. And then they repeat. And then I have a question. May I ask where the products are manufactured? They're actually made in Brooklyn and they are in compliance with um, LEED. Um, they're made with, um, with inks that are you know, non-toxic. So that's really great. Someone wants to know how you came up with the name Peg Norris. Oh, yes, we forgot to talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> um, Peg is my, Peggy is my grandmother's name. Norris is a family last body, a lot of strong women. <laughs> and they both are very strong women. And we also, you know, Peggy Guggenheim, we, you know, we, that was like, we always imagined Peggy Guggenheim. When we think of Peg Norris, we think, you know, a supporter of the arts. It's almost like she's a person. Yeah, so. that's cool. That's really cool. Someone wants to know if the murals can be custom sized to 10 feet high. So the murals are made with a lot of room at the top and at the bottom so that they can be cut off and you won't really, um, you know, it's not obvious that they've been cut off. So they're designed in a way that is compatible with eight foot ceilings, 10 foot ceilings, 12 foot ceilings. And almost like the old borders from the 70s and 80s, you can cut the border off and uh, you can take it off entirely or you can cut that part and add the back, right? Isn't that correct? I think wallpaper, our wallpaper guys um, explained that to us when we were adding that border in that you could just- Take it off if you, right, exactly. Then add it back right. once right. you get the right height. Right. So we have a um, question from our friend, John Bassard. Many emerging- <laughs> <laughs> um, many emerging and established artists balance on a very fine line between decorative art and fine art. They want to be seen, one, they want to be seen, two, they need to make money, but they don't want to be categorized as a B-list decorative artist. 
Tell us about the conversations that you as a team have with the artists to get them enthusiastic and willing to participate in the world of decoration. Well, I think, as we mentioned earlier, our timing is really, really good. You're seeing a lot of really incredible artists venture into design and they're thinking of creative, bold ways to translate their art into design. I think um, in 2020, the, the lines between design and fine art definitely blurred more than ever. I think about the Haas brothers who are incredible artists and um, you know they've been embraced by the art world. So I think artists are, are looking for interesting ways to get their work out into the world and I I feel that you know doing a wallpaper and not in and I've also been worried about overexposing them but I think keeping it keeping it high level keeping the work really part of who they are and what what they embody as an artist is really important and also I think playing with scale so it is you know some of this past work are owned by other clients, so um, or how it how it's how it's tra translated, I think is really important. You don't want to do the exact same thing that right. is a piece of art. So right. we always look at it in a different scale, so it's not competing with anything they're doing. Yeah, and I think you're seeing really great companies like ArtSpace that partner with artists and they come up with really clever ideas to translate their artwork into functional items. So it's a, it's a good time for artists right now in that way. Yeah. I miss you so much, John Bassar. Yeah, please. <laughs> Me too. Um, I have another question. It's interesting to hear that many designers need to figure out the business, um, the business part of starting a company. I have a background in business, but a love for design. Is there a place in these businesses for people like me, non-designers who love business and want to find roles in the business? Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> call me. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that I've been looking around for because, you know, like I said, it's been easy for me to run a business, but as soon as we started spending non billable time on things like that, my numbers started changing. So it's been, um, it's been very exciting um, to learn about it, but I, there, if, I think that would be the biggest gift is um, someone who was interested in this world, but also could bring to the table the design, I mean, the business part. Okay, um, someone wants to know what our favorite quarantine snack is. My answer is what isn't my favorite quarantine <laughs> snack? <laughs> That's all I've been doing. Do you guys, oh, and there's Barry. <laughs> <laughs> They don't leave me hanging. <laughs> I have none left or I'd be toasting with you too. Um, <laughs> We're not planking. If you, if, how did, um, wait, here's one more. If you could give one piece of advice to young designers wanting to venture out on their own and start their own firm, what would it be? Barry, that one's probably for you. Um, you know, I think um, getting a very, I think, talking to a lot of people and I think this is a great time to do it because people have um, more you know give me a, about a month to get my business and, <laughs> and all the finances straight from come, working from home but I do think that um, starting to do small projects with people get a, a solid business um, a solid business um, plan um, down, talk to, um, there's so many resources through your own Better Business Bureau and through universities. And um, I think that's just as important as the, um, the, the design portion. I do think working for a design firm and I think different ones. So I got a lot of experience from Hirsch Bedner doing large projects from afar. So the, the project management that's what I understood more. And um, I worked for a small business owner, Dana Holcomb, um, and I wish I'd learned more, you know, like I worked for her longer before I started my own business because I think part has always been um, my, 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 not my weakness, but I've always felt like that was where I needed to employ help. And fuzzy, get support. Fuzzy bunny. Fuzzy bunny. 
That's what we call. I, I mean, I know the big picture. I just don't like those small details. <laughs> so, um, Chandra, someone wants to know a little bit more about SoGo. Could you elaborate? Yeah, SoGo, um, well, it is a contemporary art gallery in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we represent artists all over the world. We put on six exhibitions annually. We also have a really great bookstore that's attached to the gallery. And um, our website is soco-gallery.com if they'd like to visit our program. Okay, fantastic. It's a wonderful gallery. Um, one more question, or maybe two more. We are a mother-daughter, women-owned local food, small business, enjoy magpies, started recently. What learnings would you share uh, with someone like us from your experiences? <clears throat> Could you repeat that question again? I guess um, for a small food business, what are some of the things that you think are that you've experienced that you think are most um, important that other people can learn from? I think um, having a mission and a vision and an execution plan and, and goals. I also think marketing is incredibly important, uh, especially for the food industry. And I think finding creative partners and um, going out, getting people to love your business and get invested in your business is also key. And I love that it's a mother da daughter doing it together. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, so nice. So I have one more question, but before, but before I go there, I wanted to just show everybody the newest bulletin by Schumacher, which has the cover of Queen's Flight on it by Ann Lemansky. So I don't know how many of you know this, but Schumacher does a, a glossy magazine twice a year. I used to be the editor in chief of uh, Veranda Magazine and also the style director for Domino. I've worked at El Decor and House Beautiful. So we have our very own magazine and you can subscribe to it if you'd like to. If, if, you, if you go on the Schumacher website at schumacher.com and scroll all the way down on the homepage, you can see a link to subscribe. So I'm sorry for the shameless pr promotion, but I think I'm really proud of it. So I hope you'll like it. Well, I need, I need to brag on you a little bit. I have to say that um, I have to say that this this bulletin is one of the most beautiful publications I've seen, and you have such an amazing eye for um, e editing editorial eye, and um, so proud to be in it with um, Shani's house, and have been such a huge fan of yours, and I can't believe i'm so amazed at what you do for schumer and you know this yeah, this creative bulletin. director and also editor of a magazine well, thanks guys i love doing it i mean it comes naturally to me i was the editor of my high school yearbook i just keep keep on doing it <laughs> <laughs> but thank you i mean i love the bulletin because you know every other brand that i've worked for it was somebody else's brand and you know i mean i love domino but domino was its own brand that was based on lucky and veranda i got to it and the dna had already been established so i loved the magazine but it was veranda and the bulletin is the first magazine that's really mine and what i love about it is we don't have any you know there's Every magazine I've ever worked on, there, there were stories and, and ideas had to fit within the stories that the magazine did. And at the Bulletin, we really do whatever we feel like doing. You know, it's like what we're excited about. And I think that comes through. You know, there's just a passion. It's a little bit quirky. It's not all quirky, but you know, it, we follow our passions in the magazine and it seems to have really excited people. So that's nice. I think it's, um, you know, when you did Shani's house, that's a, you asked to do, um, you know, in the, what, I can't remember which bulletin. And I said, she, you know, so much of the fabrics that we use for Schumacher are just the, the solids and the woven. So I, I don't know if it's exactly, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's exactly the house you want to portray. And I thought it was so interesting that that is not your focus. You just want to, you want to show how people live and ins inspire people. And it's not necessarily this, you know, promotion. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be promotional. It doesn't have to be all Schumacher. It's really about inspiring people um, and, you know, people's love of design. So that's our main mission. It's not a, it's not a shameless um, promotional magazine. 
All right, I'm going to ask you one more question. Uh, let's see. Um, I've got a lot of nice comments on the bulletin. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Um, so there was a question about where are you finding creative inspiration from these days? Well, these days, being relegated to home, I think I, you know, social media, Instagram is, um, I'm not on it a ton, but there's a lot of great content out there if you're following the right people. And I have gone back to my library. All of my books that I studied when I was designing my house with Barry, I, a lot of them I haven't touched in a, a long time. So I've gone back to those and they're still good. <laughs> Yeah. And I think it's interesting, you know, the books, I think it's, it's, you know, it's sometimes it's better than Instagram for inspiration because you're looking at something that is so different than what it will end up being, but you can be inspired by it and, and you can take it to a very different place rather than just like looking at this beautiful room and saying, how do I redo this? I think we get so, and I think you've had a, a talk at SoCo, Dara, when you were doing your your book, um, The yeah, Authentics. And I think that's one of the things, if you're just looking at Instagram all the time, you're you're seeing it exactly the way it's gonna be. But if you're looking at some of these old beautiful books, like my Jean-Michel Frank books and um, Prouvé books and, and um, beautiful old um, Vogue books, you're really looking at things in a totally different way. You're, you know, you're seeing people's homes that you can't really recreate, you can't, really recreate a Scottish ca castle, but you can see pieces like paneling and fireplaces and, you know, art and um, fabrics and how they used it in a different way. And I think that that is, that is really where I'm finding inspiration and finally getting to pour through these books more. And I save all, if there was a design magazine that I loved 15 years ago, I save it and I still have it. And I go back to those, those magazines and it's amazing to see what's still relevant. Yeah. Good design is always lasting. Yeah, and I agree with you about books. I think it's a different experience. We have a book coming out, whether it's only in September that we're really excited about. It's called S is for Style. And it's a the book is divided into different chapters by style. It's by no means meant to be a, um, it's supposed to just be inspiration, not meant to dictate people as to what style they are but it's kind of a finding your style kind of book on a very elevated level. And at the end of each chapter, we have a historic um, spread with like rooms of that style. So for example, we'll have, we have a style that's called um, uh, laid back. We have another style that's called exuberant. We have another style that's classic. I mean, and we have great historic rooms in that, in those styles. But it was so fun going through some of my old books to find the rooms because they're not all on Instagram. They feel fresh. They're, um, and there's so much to learn. And one of the other things that I thought was so interesting is just how things have been borrowed over the years. You know, like old Francis Elkins rooms, you know, I can see in a Parrish Hadley room that I can see in somebody else's room. You know, it's really fun to see how great design lives on and how people get inspired. Um, so that was a really fun project. <clears throat> I can't wait to see it. Yeah, me too. I we hope you like it. Uh, at the bookstore. <laughs> bring you back to Charlotte yeah, for, back. A, for a, <laughs> for a, a book day. signing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would love nothing less. So that would be so, or nothing more, whatever the expression is. Thank you so much. <laughs> nothing more. Um, well, ladies, you've been delightful. Thanks for making a, a dreary New York day have some sunshine. You've really been fabulous and I'm, I'm very, feel very fortunate to have you in my personal life and my working life. So thank you both. And thank you everyone for joining. Thank, thank you so you, much, Dara. Dara. This was a bye everybody. Thank Pleasure you so much. You. Thank you. Bye.